what is going on my hustlers here today with another video it's a little bit different than what i normally do but i want to give you uh three things today and there's really not a great flow to it but three things one is a question two is a full stock evaluation of a stock that i am not buying and i recommend you do not buy that is starting to make its rounds on on facebook and youtube and, and different platforms and I just after researching it myself to say hey should i buy this stock it is a hard no uh, from me. Sometimes I give soft no's like I did with uh, BioLace and Zomitica. Maybe those stocks go up. Again, I'm probably like 60% bullish on those, but with this, um, I am almost uh, shorting it, you know, and I, and I hate shorting stocks because I like to see stocks go up. I like to see companies do well, more jobs, but sometimes just there's no light at the end of the tunnel for this company that I see. And the third thing I want to do is tell you uh, the stocks to buy and not necessarily sp certain stocks specifically, but questions that you need to answer um, and, and how I look at stocks. Uh, that's something that's come up and I want to do a big video on it, but kind of now just kind of whet your appetite, I guess you could say, um, to give you a little course for that. So the first thing is the question. And so any time you go to buy a stock, you should be able to answer this question thoroughly. And that question is, what is your bullish thesis? And so you should be able to explain uh, everything about it. You should be able to explain what the company does. You should be able to explain why they're going to make money. If your answer is they're coming out with a new product in six months and it's gonna be awesome, that's it? I mean, what if the product fails to launch? What if the product is not as awesome as we thought it was? Is that is that it? Is there only one thing that we're hoping for? Um, and so that that's a question, I guess, just it's very broad, but what is your bullish thesis? And the word thesis, I think, Im, Im, you know, implies this wordiness. And I think there has to be a very well thought out, explained reason why you're buying a stock. And it should not be because some guy on YouTube told me to do it or because some mailing list I'm a part of told me to do it or some guy I follow on Patreon or some, uh, you know, forum that I'm on. Those are not good answers. And the deal is everybody says invest in what you understand. And yet you think because you watched one YouTube video about it, that suddenly you understand. And again, there are some guys on YouTube that I highly recommend that are that are just fantastic at breaking down a stock. But there's a lot of guys who just say, buy this stock, oh, buy this stock, oh, 5X, buy this stock, 2X, buy this stock. This stock's gonna surge next week, buy this stock. And don't really do a thorough analysis or like me, I'll give you a Reader's Digest on a stock and tell you kind of why I'm buying it and things I'm looking at, but I always tell you to do your research too. And so if you cannot give a thorough bullish thesis for a stock, don't buy it. Now, number two, the, the clickbait part of this video, the, the title of it, a stock that I'm not going to buy. The stock that I'm not going to buy is GameStop. GameStop, and this is a stock that there are some big dogs that I respect who, who hold it. Uh, Michael Burry, the guy who came to fame in the big short, holds a pretty large position in this, and I respect him. Obviously, he was right about shorting uh, the real estate market you know, back to 11, 12 years ago, but I think he's just wrong on this one. And so as I look at GameStop, the financials, here are the big financials that you need to know, but like not even breaking down forward PE, not even breaking down those things. The easiest financial to start to look at is income, net income. At the end of the day, is your business making money or it, and, and so, you know, I, I, I'm trying to go trying to stay from question one of like how I, you know, the full bullish thesis. But as we look at GameStop, it's been around as a company for a while. And so are they making money? So here is their net income bottom line numbers. 2017, they made $350,000 profit, which is good. It's good. 2018, down to 30,000. And then the last two years, they've combined to lose over a million dollars net income at the end of the day. Now, that is a troubling trend. There is no reason that you should be investing in a company that is actively losing money and trending in the wrong direction. 
just the pure financials of it. Sometimes people say, well, I looked at a company's financial and it looks good. There's nothing good about GameStop's financials. And this is just, again, I'm taking for this from a very, very basic. Now, there's a lot of other numbers you can look at and those don't look any good either, but just giving you a very basic, uh, the company is not making money, they're not doing well, 2021 is not looking any better for them, and I get, corona happens, but look at a company uh, like Kohl's or Bath & Body Works that they've adjusted, they've gone online, which brings me to my next point. I, when I look at a company, I look at you know the, the financials is, is huge, but there's also the practical part. I want to download the app. I want to go visit. I want to see what their customer service is like. I want to see how that product works. And so GameStop, GameStop is a meme. You know, it's something where you go and you buy, you know, the newest Madden, Madden 21. You buy it brand new for 60 bucks and you and you go to return it the next day and they go, you know, I'll give you $3 for it. And you're like, what? What just happened? You know, we've seen those memes. The other thing we, we think about GameStop is we think about overpriced, uh, used games. And when you think about GameStop, do you think about their website? Do you think about the app? I mean, did you even know they had an app? Go check out how they're rated in the App Store and the Play Store. Now, they're a decent, I think it's three and a half stars, but that's really not that good in the realms of apps. And do you have the, do you have the GameStop app downloaded? Think about all the apps that you have downloaded that you buy things even if they have a physical store. I have the Walmart app, I have the Lowe's app, I have all these, you know, Publix, grocery store, you know, I have all these apps, but the one app I don't have is GameStop. And so, I, you know, maybe some of you guys didn't even know that GameStop has an app because we don't use it. Think about as you, uh, and I know probably a lot of people watching this um, that are into stocks are probably not necessarily gamers, but find your gamer friends and ask them, hey, the last time you bought a controller, where did you buy it from? You buy it from Amazon? Did you buy it from walmart.com? You just go down to the store and buy it from Walmart or Target? Or did you actually go to GameStop? Did the last time you bought a game, do you actually go down, do you buy the physical disc still? Or are you downloading everything online for just ease of use? That you know, you don't want to have to go down to the store, that it's a little bit cheaper if you do the digital download. And so for all these reasons, GameStop is not what it used to be. I remember 10, 15 years ago, you'd go to GameStop and you'd have to wait to try out one of the games or to try out one of the systems. Now you go to GameStop, you may be the only person there. There may be an employee in the back, you know, taking a little break, and you're the only person there. And so for all these things, the financials look horrible. And when you go and you look at the actual store, it's not looking any better. There is no competitive advantage that GameStop has versus Amazon or Walmart or Target. And they're eating up more and more share of the video game space. And it's just, I guess it reminds me of Blockbuster. You know, what can Blockbuster do to sell movies or rent movies that's, that another company cannot? Well, if they would have been the first one streaming, that could have helped, but they weren't. In fact, they never went to streaming. Or if they could have had some shipping value or were, you know, if they could have had some competitive advantage to make them better or to have the best prices or to have you know, some kind of unique experience that you go to Blockbuster because you don't get that experience somewhere else. And GameStop's not offering any of that. And Blockbuster didn't. And look at what happened to Blockbuster. And so GameStop is just a, again, I hate shorting stocks, but when you look at how much the share price is right now, it is just ridiculous for how much money they're losing and for how little hope there is long-term in the future of the company. And their, you know, their clients, their, their consumers right now, Again, go ask the average 15, 18 year old kid, hey, last time you got a video game, where'd you get it from? And the answer is not going to be GameStop. And even trading stuff in, now with uh, you know eBay, Facebook Marketplace, we're not going back into GameStop to get pennies on a dollar for a used game that's worth a whole lot more than what they're gonna offer. And so again, GameStop, just not a, a, a buy for me. Now the third thing, <laughs> <clears throat> is stocks that I want to buy. And I want to buy things that make sense. And I want to buy things that make sense that only have the opportunity to go up, meaning I'm 95% sure 
or more that the stock is going to go up. That, again, outside of a black swan event, meaning, again, COVID, you know, some kind of massive crazy thing, that stock is going to have a 95% chance of going up. And I think sometimes we, we look at stocks and there's only one path to, to that stock going up. And it's a 50-50. You know, if that product comes out and it's awesome, or if this new car comes out and it's awesome, or if this, you know, patent gets approved, or if this drug gets, uh, you know, passes regulation, or if this trial goes okay, then maybe they'll be profitable. Maybe it'll work out. But what happened to the stocks that are just historically good? And I'm not saying to invest in old stocks. You know, I'm not saying everything has to be Coke and Walmart and Target and McDonald's, but those are all good stocks. And look at those stocks over the course of the last 10 years, or even over the course of COVID-19 in the last year, that all those stocks have done really well. And you know that none of them are going out of business because they are constantly trying to stay on the front lines of uh, their competitive edge, that they are not Blockbuster, they're not GameStop, they're not Circuit City, where they're under threat and, and, and not adjusting and adapting to be better, that they are constantly adapting. I think about a company like Disney. You know, the, the theme parks, uh, if you have, I'm sure most of us have Disney Plus and we watched, you know, those documentaries and uh, even uh, Saving Mr. Banks, you know, part of that movie you know, the, the writer there is saying, um, you know, she calls uh, the, the parks cash cows. She calls them money printing machines. And that's just how Disney makes its money. And the parks had to shut down for months, months and months and months. And yet Disney stock is still going up. And you look at their net income bottom line, and it's still going up because they're finding a way to adapt. And so good companies find a way to adapt. They don't always have to be the brand new companies. They don't always have to be that brand new product. They can have multiple streams of income and multiple products and still continue to go up because they are continually adapting. And again, I love new stocks. You go back and watch my videos. There are stocks that, that we pick that are, are great companies that are just starting out. But when I look at those companies, it's because I know 95% chance that those companies are going to make it because they have incredible value to them. That it's not, you know, if this one government contract works out, then maybe this stock will go to the moon, rocket emoji, you know? But I look at that stock and I say, this company is doing some groundbreaking research. And they're new and they're going to go up fast. But even if they don't go up fast, they're going to go up over the long term. I talked about the Genius brand. They may not pop next week or next month or even this year, but over the long term, no matter what happens, and, and I think right now that's, that's probably what's prompting me to make this video, is the stock market has been just straight up since uh, March, you know, since uh, that first crash in the middle of March, everything's been straight up. And so, you know, for people like me to come on and say, I made 50% or 100%, Everybody did. I mean, you could have put your money in an index fund and done 50%. So that doesn't mean anything. And I think that trend is going to continue for the next few months as more and more stimulus money comes out. But what happens when we first see that resistance? What happens when we see a 5% crash in a month? I don't want to say crash, just a 5% pullback, a, a bear market. And then the next month we see another 5%. What do we do? Are we, are we going full panic mode? Are all the weak hands gonna get shaken out? Or are we invested in companies that we believe in long-term to know this company's not going belly up? Yeah, we're a little bare right now, but I know if I stay in this company for the long-term, they will do well. They have a good CEO. They have strong finances. I've been to their store. I've experienced their customer service. I know their product line. And I know that they're going to do well, that it's not just some pump and dump that some YouTuber hyped up. And I know, oh, if this product comes out like it's supposed to, it's going to be awesome. But no, we know that this company is going to do well because it's a good company, that we know that, that, we're, that we're putting 95% faith in this, that we know this company is going to work out, that it would take, it, I would be shocked if this company did not work out. 
and the deal is with a lot of these penny stocks and and I, and I think sometimes uh, I got a comment the other day how come you don't make more videos how come you don't make a video on this company and this company and this company and the truth of the matter is some of the companies you just can't find good information on they're too new I've never heard of them they're just known as a ticker symbol and someone goes oh you should have got in because it went up well just because the stock got lucky and you got lucky and timed it correctly does not mean it was a smart play you know a broken clock is right twice a day I think about what Warren Buffett said. Warren Buffett said that it's better to be a little right than wrong at all. And so sometimes when I invest in these penny stocks, even though I'm 95% sure, that I'll gladly take my money out. I'll sell it early. That I do play some spec plays, but I don't do that with a lot of my money because I'm investing in these companies that I believe in long term, like the Tattooed Chef, like uh, Beyond Meat. I did that video today. I believe in Dropbox. I believe in Tesla. These are companies that are going to be around for a long term. And here's the deal. When you believe in a company, when you believe in their financials, when you believe in the product or the service or whatever it is that they're providing, when a dip happens, like in Tattooed Chef, if Tattooed Chef were to drop to $20, I would just buy more. If Dropbox were to drop down to $19, I would just buy more. If Tesla drops below $800, I would just buy more because I believe in them long term. But what happens if your penny stock drops? What happens if it were to drop 20%? Would you be commenting on that YouTuber's page? Would you comment on your, you know, all your Facebook groups? What happened? I thought we were supposed to go up. I, you know, I saw the rocket emojis. This is supposed to go to the moon. Or would you say, oh, this is a great buying opportunity. The fact that this company has a pullback, it's a gift. I'm buying more of it. Or do you have a weak hand because you know that that's a weak stock and you didn't do your due diligence? And so, again, I, I know I'm rambling here. I did not mean for this video to be this long, but I do appreciate you making it this far. Re regardless, I hope that you do your due diligence. And again, I'm going to do a full video on what exactly it means to do, to do a full due diligence, but um, hopefully you made it this far. I appreciate it. Uh, if this is your first time here, I usually don't make videos quite like this. Usually I am the hype guy saying, hey, buy this stock, don't buy this stock. But I just felt like this video was appropriate for today. I appreciate you hitting that like button. Leave a comment if you got any questions or if you want me to check out a stock. Again, I'll, I'll do my best to get to all those. I've done a couple of those, um, but I'm going to be honest, just like I was today with GameStop. If it's not a buy, it's not a buy. And I'm going to tell you why. The financials just don't make sense. So thank you for watching. You guys have a great day.